Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series, moving from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number seven, and I'm going to discuss the phase and group velocities. I've done quite a few videos previous to this, and to be honest, they are, uh, well, three of them are quite relevant, and they are as follows. The first three videos after my introduction are videos two, three, and four, and I discussed waves and how to write a harmonic wave. And that's what we'll need in this particular video. In the last two videos, I discussed moving from the trigonometric representation to the complex representation. So just as a small bit of a recap, we know that we can, re we can write a harmonic wave, wave function we'll say, as a function in one dimension of x and t. And we can write that as a times the cosine of kx minus omega t plus delta. The reason we use cosine rather than sine is because of the complex representation. But for the moment, it, it, I suppose in many respects, it doesn't really matter, cosine or sine. Now we know, of course, that the argument of the cosine, in this case, is kx minus omega t plus delta. Or plus or minus omega t plus or minus delta. But what this really is, this amounts to being the phase of the cosine. And we give this the placeholder phi. So if we analyze how the phase changes, we can analyze what the wave actually does. Now if we look closely, what we actually do have here, if we take the partial derivatives of phi with respect to x holding t fixed, we get that's the wave number, and with respect to t holding x fixed, we get plus or minus the angular frequency. Now, the, these two expressions should bring to mind an equation from the theory of partial derivatives. And this is as follows. It says that minus del phi del t holding x fixed multiplied by del x del phi holding t fixed is the same as getting del x del t holding phi fixed. But what is del x del t? None other than the velocity of the wave. So putting those together, we find that the velocity of the wave, so we have del x del t is plus or minus omega over k is plus or minus the velocity. So we've now found the velocity of the wave. And we call this the phase velocity. Why do we call this the phase velocity? Well, clearly, because this is the velocity with which the phase is changing. OK, so now it's time to think about the group velocity. So this might be a bit ahead of you, but it, ahead of you in the way I'm doing the, the order of my videos, but perhaps you've heard of this as well. So let's say, for example, we have two different waves on a string or whatever, wherever they are in a medium and that they are interacting with each other. OK, so let's say, for example, we have Let's say here's here's my string, and we ha might have a wave doing this. This wave might be moving to the right, and then we might also on that that same string have another wave moving to the left. Now let's say um, actually yeah let let's let's say that that is after what's happening, but what. What does the resultant wave look like? Because these waves are going to interact with each other. So what might the resultant wave look like? Well, you're going to get some sort of interference, and I'm sure you've heard of interference before. So let's suggest the interference uh, pattern occurs and we get something that looks like this. Something like that. Now, I know my drawing is, is quite poor. But what it seems here, let's 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 say I just ex exaggerate it here. So what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes when you have waves interacting with each other, you'll get areas of in constructive interference, and you'll get areas of destructive interference. Now, if these were sound waves, this would cause us to hear what's known as beats. Okay, beats. 
Now, you can check beats uh, if you like. You can, I'm sure you've done that in your physics lab before. So what you're doing, you, you're making beats. Now, if you look closely, what actually we have is we have two sets of frequencies because the, let's say if I draw it and try to draw it slightly better. Okay, so this is, no, I really can't. So I'm just gonna go again, right? So this is gonna be terrible. So here's the area of constructive interference, more constructive interference. And in the middle we have destructive interference, so just a flat line, let's say. Now, if you actually look closely, what you have is, you have a modulation frequency. You have this one here. All right? But if you were to pick an individual wave, you'll see the waves are going, they're very So our modulation, like I said, looks like this then if I do both sides. So what in actual fact we have is we have the frequency of the wave which I've drawn in purple, this one here, and the frequency of the wave I've drawn either in black or orange depending which one we want to look at. So there are two frequencies here. So when we add waves of different frequencies we get, if, if it's sound waves we get beats, if it's quantum mechanical um, matter waves we might get a wave packet but we get different frequencies we get two frequencies so the envelope travels at what's known as the group velocity and the the inside travels at what's known as the phase velocity so we know the formulas, well we know the formula for the, the phase velocity already, it's omega over k. And I'm going to tell you the phase, the, the group velocity is d omega dk. It's the rate of change of the omega with respect to k. So that's, that's the introduction that I want to give right now. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the box below.